So I've been back in Australia now for the past month and in that month I've actually updated my camera. I'm now shooting on the RF system and I've just picked up the Canon R6 which is shooting this video. But while I've been back here I've also been going through a whole bunch of my old stuff, clearing a whole bunch of stuff out and getting ready to basically move back to Bali, back to Indonesia. And one of the things I kind of stumbled upon, which I was hoping to stumble upon while I was home, is my old Canon 6D. This is the first full frame camera I had, and this kind of, I wouldn't say it shaped my photography kind of career at all, but it definitely shaped my brand love and brand kind of connection to Canon. And I wanted to talk about this today. I wanted to talk about the Canon 6D in 2022. Is it relevant? Is it something that's even a viable option? Um, how good are they, uh, especially stacking up to the recent technology that's come out? How much do they kind of cost in comparison to what is out? Um, and yeah, overall, whether it's just a good camera to buy. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And uh, like I said, I'm shooting this on the Canon R6, so let me know how it looks because I bloody hope it looks good in all honesty. I haven't spent a small amount of money on this camera upgrade. And obviously along with the R6, I've also purchased a fair few new RF lenses. Uh, so bank accounts are looking a little dreary at the moment, but nonetheless, today we're gonna to be talking about the Canon R6 and hopefully this won't make your bank account look as dreary as the R6 has made mine. But uh, anyway, let's dive into today's video. So let's start with the specs, the nitty gritty, the technical specifications of the Canon 6D. So this guy is packing a 20 megapixel full frame sensor, 11 autofocus points, 4.5 frames per second burst shooting, whether you'd even call that burst these days, I'm not sure. And of course the Canon EF mount. Now, of course there are a whole lot of other specs and other things to kind of cover in this, but I'm not gonna boil down to the video bit rate it's recording at because, well, in all honesty, this really isn't a video camera but nonetheless they are the overall broad specs of the Canon 6D and by the sounds of things it doesn't really sound that bad apart from the autofocus of course which is only 11 points and that 4.5 frames per second burst shooting which is snail's pace slow this guy isn't too bad. So looking at the specs alone, who is this camera for? Well, I can tell you right now, if you're shooting sports or anything fast paced or dark environments, or you really need to rely on your autofocus like nothing else, this camera is not for you at all. But if you're just starting to get into landscape photography, or maybe you're looking to upgrade from an earlier Canon DSLR body, and you're looking to uh, maybe step up into the full frame range of things, this guy is for you. If you're shooting portraits, if you're shooting real estate, real estate, this camera is actually pretty good for real estate photography. If you're shooting a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't need you to be moving around quickly, changing things like crazy and relying on autofocus, then I really don't see a problem with this camera at all. Obviously, where the 6D falls very short is its video capabilities. Only being able to shoot 1080p 30 frames per second at not the best bit rate is probably not ideal for today's standard. If you're doing any professional video work, I can tell you right now, the 6D is not for you and you can get way better cameras for the price of the 6D than you could just buying the 6D and trying to get it to go well for video. But in saying that, if you're a photographer and you're also doing videos for social media, for YouTube, for TikTok, Instagram Reels, whatever the case, then honestly, I don't really see an issue with this. There is an autofocus built in uh, to video, which is a little bit Bit of a shame so no continuous autofocus and of course it doesn't have a flip out screen it's just locked in the back but if you can deal with those two things and you can make it work then the 6d is going to give you somewhat decent video and just a little side note something that i absolutely love about the 6d is its size and weight all the other canon full frame dslrs like the 5d series the 1d series they're all huge and heavy. And while the 6D isn't small and light, it's the smallest and the lightest of the pick, only coming in at 770 grams with the battery. So in my opinion, that's actually pretty light. Now, of course, mirrorless cameras can get a lot lighter than that. And looking at the Canon RP, which is probably the 6D's biggest competitor right now and has outclassed it in every kind of facet, um, yeah, it's not too bad. I actually don't mind the weight of this and it feels incredibly good and well-weighted in the hand. 
Moving on to price. Now, this is where the 60 shines. It is going to probably crush a lot of the competition here, but you can pick one of these up for about $450 to $500. Now, in my opinion, that's a steal. That is a great price for one of these guys. And if I paid, I think I paid back like maybe five, six years ago, I think I paid about $1,000 to $1,200 for one of these. So, so they have more than halved in price since then. And these prices are eBay prices. If you go to somewhere like Gumtree, Craigslist, or somewhere where you meet in person and exchange like for cash, then you can pick these up even cheaper because you don't have to pay the eBay fees. Well, the seller doesn't have to worry about that and they don't bake it into the price. But that's just kind of a tip for anything. If you're ever buying and selling any gear, camera gear, whatever the case, you can usually find it cheaper if you actually meet them in person and exchange like that. But another huge price benefit of the 6D is the lens selection. Now, Canon has got their brand new R line of cameras and of course came along with that the RF glass. Now, I'm shooting right now on the 24 to 70 2.8 and this thing is amazing, yet it cost me about $3,800, which was a lot of money, but you can get a very, very similar lens, the 24 to 70 2.8 EF version for about half that price, if not less, especially going secondhand and depending on how good your negotiation skills are, the EF glass is so much cheaper. And that's purely because it's now old technology. It's been discontinued. They're not making any new lenses. So secondhand marketplaces are your best friend in this case. And of course, you won't be getting any warranty or guarantee on the gear. But in saying that, you're gonna be saving a whole lot of money and you can reinvest into more and or better glass than you otherwise could have if you had have gone with the latest technology. So now onto the really interesting part of the video. How practical is the 6D in 2022? Well, like I said, if you're shooting landscapes, portraits, slow moving stuff, it's perfect, honestly. If you're a beginner or even like an intermediate kind of photographer stepping up or stepping into your first full frame camera, this guy's great. It's gonna teach you everything you need to learn. But if you're shooting anything fast paced, you need to rely on autofocus. You have anything to do with even just a little bit more professional video quality, then this isn't for you at all. The 11 autofocus points gets easily trumped by any mirrorless counterpart. I think the Canon RP has over four or 5,000 autofocus points that cover the complete sensor, while the 6D has 11 just centered in the middle of the frame so you don't get that full frame autofocus coverage which is a little bit annoying of course it also doesn't have that flip out screen and it has no continuous autofocus in video mode but for photography i really don't see a huge downside to this you're still getting those amazing canon colors and while there are only 11 autofocus points you're still getting canon's really good autofocus system and like i said being able to spend a whole lot less on really good glass that ef glass you're kind of in front every single way. So everyone's needs are gonna change when it comes to photography and video. And if you think you can get away with a Canon 6D, I think you'd be silly not to pick one of these up. Like I said, they're very cheap at the moment. And yes, they're probably going to go down even further in price as years go on. But if this is a stepping stone for you up from a very entry level DSLR or even a very entry level mirrorless camera from a different brand, then this guy is for you. If not, and you're willing to spend just a little bit more, the Canon RP is a no brainer and it basically replaced the Canon 6D, even just at a more cheaper price, but a mirrorless version of it. So that is my opinion on the Canon 6D in 2022. I still think it's a pretty good buy if it makes sense for you. And if not, definitely have a look at the Canon EOS RP and the EOS R. But that is gonna wrap up today's video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed and I hope I have been able to kind of, I don't know, add some value and, and help you make your mind up whether you should pick one of these up in 2022. I know my videos have all been filmed in this location recently, which is my bedroom back in Australia, but soon I'll be back over to Indonesia where I'll be able to take you guys way into the middle of nowhere again, shooting sunrises, sunsets, and yeah, just having a grand old time. Unfortunately, while the weather hasn't been the worst back in Sydney, I have had no car here, and I've also been focusing on a whole lot of business things that I need to take care of behind the scenes, which has obviously made it a little bit hard to shoot YouTube videos over here. But like I said, shortly enough, this will be all a thing of the past. And while I don't wanna give up the whole studio vibe, I'm definitely craving getting out and shooting a little bit more. But anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, leave a like down below. If you're new around here, subscribe. And if you'd like to continue learning about photography, maybe check out a video or two of mine. I'm trying to cover everything I can and bring the most value to you guys. That is it from me and I'll catch you in the next one.
Peace.